Hello, this is Haku Dabin, and I am here to cover Sarkism, also known as a Sarkic cult. Sarkism, derived from the, the Greek I can't read that, or flesh, is a religious slash as philosophical system that encompasses a variety of traditions, beliefs, and spiritual practices, largely based on teachers attributed to Grand Carthus Eon. From proto Leonesian who's on meaning breaker of ropes, and by extension, destroyer of bondage. And was brought into Old added it to it as Ian or John. It's deified founder. Adherents practice ritual cannibalism, human sacrifice, corporal augmentation, thaumaturgy, dimensional manipulation, and the formation of packs with otherworldly entities. Organic ma manipulation has allowed certain psychics to achieve anomalous states of being, trans transcending the physical limitations of baseline humanity. Highly secretive, the general public appears to have little to no direct knowledge of their existence. Some organizations are aware of them, such as the Global Code Coalition and the Horizon Initiative and the Church of the Broken God, abusive in apocalyptic terms. Certain explains their sex, such as the Church Max William, general reviews sarcasm as either destroyed a thousand of years ago or as simply an allegory for the imperfection of organic life and for those who are tethered to their base biological nature. Whew. Well, the Horizon or Initiative is uh, a group of religious organizations made to either combat or help help classify and contain anomalies, whichever one is possible at any given time. Though it hinders investigation, their clandestine nature is ultimately beneficial to the preservation of normalcy. Disease is often viewed with reverence, and psychic strands have been discovered with offerings of swollen lymph nodes and tumorous growth. Certain psychic cults treat contagions as a consecration, a means to cull the weak and purify the masses, and thus actively seek to ensure their spread. Most were not odd. Most, but not at all, psychics display an inherent resistance to pathogens, though it remains unknown if this is a anomalous or naturally occurring attribute. Psychic anomalies are not without the risk to their users. While psychics are able to augment themselves into physically superior forms, it has been shown that such alterations, or perhaps the secret truths they come to learn along their paths at the apotheosis, have a degenerate influence on mental stability. The exact cause of this remains unexplained, but is most exemplified at among known carcists, who frequently display symptoms of psychosis. <sighs> the Foundation divides psychic cults into two dis distinct strands, protopsychics and neopsychic. Hypothetical third strand, presently designated as eurosarchism, represents the original teachings of of Eon during his life, prior to the collapse of the Adatite Empire. It is likely that this strand of psychism is long extinct, says Dr. Law. pro psychic cults tend to be found in insular communities throughout Eurasia's most isolated regions. Its followers is generally imp impoverished, if self-reliant, humble, and apprehensive towards outsiders. Such groups commonly issue modernity, display acute technophobia, and are bound by superstition and taboo. In contrast, neo psychic cults are commonly cosmopolitan and publicly embracing a modernity, showing no apparent qualms with technology, their public lives differing little from others of their culture and social status. Adherents are primarily affluent families rich in history and scandal, both generally follow a single creed whose core beliefs include following in concepts.
Apotheosis. The belief that an individual can ascend to godhood. It appears that Sarkis regards that Grand Crisis is Aeon, and to a lesser extent, his Clavigar, as a being who has undergone apotheosis. For the pro psychic, apotheosis will be achieved in time and only through Aeon. For the neo psychic, it almost appears that if one had the ability to usurp Aeon, it is their right, if not duty, to do so. The path to apotheosis is equal well, to the will to power. Will. The will to power is the primary driving force of man. The individual seeks to master all things within his, its domain, exerting the direction of power if efficacy, while other individuals do the same. Often in opposition, will is to power as form is to matter, and in turn, desire is the measure of all things. Desire is measure to all things, beyond bound from others, do as you will, to whom you will. A neopsychic proverb. Theophagy from Theos got in the suffix phagy to feed on, on to eat or devour. The sacrament into conception of a god, Sarkism holds that, that there are many gods in the universe, not, none of which they worship, and that these entities can be devoured in some fashion. Adherents already believe that this parasitic relationship, whether literal or allegorical, is the primary source of their thaumaturgical abilities. Sacrifice. Among proto psychic cults, this appears to manifest as a sacrifice of the self for the benefit of the many. neo psychic cults, in stark contrast, believe in the sacrifice of the many for the benefit of the individual. Muscle self offers damage, only to heal and become stronger rather than before. The same can be said for the mind, through developing a toleration against conventionally inconceivable things. Cycles of, of destruction and regeneration. Strife. According to psychism, is the greatest of tutors. To shepherd the flesh. It is believed that all living things descend from a singer of progenitor, further explored in the mythology section. Adherents hold that this shared ancestry, or if English speakers, I guess, usually refer to this as the old blood, is a, is a key to corporeal augmentation. I'm not trying, I'm not gonna try and say uh, these words. They are really. It, it not, uh, something that my tongue can even handle. First, suggesting a similar understanding of genetics plucked beneath layers of mysticism. It is a right of the psychic right to guide and cultivate organic matter. The most skilled flash crafters are able to steal the genes of other life forms or create new, entirely new ones. <sighs> Excuse me. Most proto psychic sects believe that Eon has achieved if or is in the process of achieving apotheosis and upon the completion of his metamorphosis will destroy this flawed stillborn or the universe and remake it into a paradise known as the eco knife. I'm not I don't even trying on this one. Where the many it will at long last know salvation and joy beneath rose colored skies. There are however other sects that believe that Eon is dead, having uttered himself to protect humanity from the machinations of the gods. neo psychic cults notably diverge from this interpretation regarding an eon with a certain amount of indifference. Their only concern is apotheosis, to become like gods through the acquisition of power, development of skill, and the severing of ethical layers that limit the potential of the individual. The Grand Carthus is not viewed as a prophet, it or a messianic figure, but rather as an individual who came closest to achieving godhood. They dismiss his moral teachings as weakness, ignoring a much of the gold scripture in favor of rituals they might exploit. While neo psychics and pro psychics share common mythology and many of the same practices, it is best to see them as distinct religions. To pro psychics, neo psychics are heretical, if not utterly profane, born in ideological. That's philosophy that is appropriate and elements of the true faith. This reader is neo psychic, especially dangerous as they lack the ethical and moral restraints, albeit ethic and morals that seem strange or relevant to modern sensibilities, common among the older traditions, perhaps even go so far as to be its antithesis. There is evidence that neo psychics have gone so far as to make pacts with 
the otherworldly beings, archons that Eon once preached against. <sighs> Sockets are known to speak and write in the Aditite language. An introduction to old Aditite is available here. I might need it later. But it appears to be a syncretism of proto uralic in the European, possibly Edevite, and Greek chaos tongue, a foundation term for a poorly understood language whose words commonly appear in psychism and lacks any own human equivalent. It's likely that such words were not intended for human vocal cords, and any pronunciation is but a close approximation. But primarily a proto uralic Practitioners of psychism do not actually refer to themselves as psychic. The term employed by the ancient Mechanites, predecessor of the Church of the Broken God, for their enemies, thought to be their trade name. It was adopted by the Global Cold Coalition and later by the Foundation as part of Project Citra. Acra. In truth, psychicals refer to their belief system as Nalka from proto uralic Ignal and Ka, meaning hunger. And under no circumstances are foundation agents use psychic or its derivatives when infiltrate in, in related cults. <clears throat> <sighs> Through adopting mechanite a, a terminology, the Foundation and GOC have unwittingly perpetuated the flesh slash mechan narrative of Kot PG. I believe this relationship to be the result of self fulfilling prophecy on the part of the mechanites. While psychosism was first encountered, it strongly resembled an end time of its adversary foretold by a mechanite known as the flesh or psychic in the original Greek. Interestingly, the Mechanites made a connection that was hardly felt by psychics in return. For psychicism, the Mechanites were simply another people that stood in their way, not some prophesied spiritual foe. Which is an inaccurate and gross simplification of psychicism. While this document aims to recognize and correct previous errors, psychic and its, its writers remain in a normative part of the Foundation lexicon. Ultimately, it is feared that the Foundation and GOC you know only a fraction of what psychosism entails and what its followers intend. Based on available information, the speculated goals of psychic cults nevertheless represent an SK-class dominance shift, including the possibility of an XK-class end-of-the-world scenario. Given what uh, SCPs I've seen and heard about being related to psychosism, I have to agree that the psychic cults do represent a possible class dominant shift or an end of the world scenario. Anyway. Hmm. Let's do culture and structure. <sighs> it's important to understand that psychicism is not only a system of beliefs, but an ancient culture that has in secret preserved its own language, traditions, and societal norms, while outwardly adopting the dominant culture of the land, say, and have it. To comprehend the psychic Ecology one must remember how their minds are shaped by a distinct social environment. Thus, behavior that would be considered right beyond the pale to most murder, torture, a, a word that I'm not going to say, etc., might be perfectly acceptable among so in psychic cults. For all psychic sex actions might be committed zealously for some perceived greater good. For neo psychics, it manifests at Nay, more slavery time I enter. To be as God's one must not be bound by moral concepts of morality. Nothing sacred, nothing taboo. 
Lines between neo psychic cult members have been deciphered, receiving a fairly intricate caste system outside the religious hierarchy. Functioning like a form of pedigree, it appears that neo psychic it's the concept doesn't appear to exist among proto psychic cults. Indeed, the idea of a caste contradicts the Italian beliefs common in, in, to early psychicism. Makes sense. Place heavy emphasis on bloodline. I, a head in an aristocracy where its marriage formed packs and the foundations of powerful psychic families, referred to by followers as high bloods, sometimes black bloods. This is likely a play on blue bloods, a term for nobility and other affluent people. It seems weird that the, the neo psychics would think that. Uh, at only the most rich and powerful would be able to become gods. I personally believe that, if anything, it would be the exact opposite. One is generally born into psychicism, with new blood introduced through a, a careful selection. It is difficult to draw a line be between cult and family in psychicism, the recruitment of outsiders is usually unnecessary as psychics have tr little trouble maintaining their numbers, their variety unheld, apparently unaffected by generations of inbreeding. Even non carcet is carcet and above, being biologically immortal, psychics have significant low rates of mortality when compared to that of an average human. Indeed, a psychic community was once discovered by studying late in medieval census data and searching for populations with unusually low mortality rates, but especially those whose numbers were unaffected by pandemics such as the Black Death. <sighs> Rarely dying and before reaching 100, unless by violence or accident. Note, it is also possible that upon reaching a certain age, neo also fight their deaths and spend the rest of their anomalously extended lives away from um, public view. Though the common psychic hierarchy has remained relatively unchanged for over the last 3,000 years, it is in no way universal. The two highest is tiers, Ozermach, or Grand Crisis, and Clavigar, High Crisis, have not been verified outside of scripture and other documents, rendering it difficult to discern whether these strings are truly part of the modern in psychic hierarchy or serve as a mythical foundation. With that said, the standard hierarchy from highest to lowest consists of uh, Ozomark, also known as the Grand Carcis, the highest tier reserved for the Prophet Eon and no other. However, it is believed that there have been pretenders claiming to be the second coming of Eon. Eon himself is further discussed throughout the document. Clavigar, the names of four Clavigar, are presently known and they appear to have served a role similar to a apostles. It is common for neo psychics to claim ancestry from Clavigar, despite evidence and against that a possibility. See the epigraphy subsection of history for information about individual Clavigar. Crisis, the spiritual and secular leaders among psychic organizations. Crisis are considered biologically immortal and very informed. Although unknown crosses appear to have been once non anomalous humans, only some maintain a human visage. And anomalous ability. It is theorized that they are able to control their Hawkas, a group of anomalous organic entities controlled by Icarsis, via the release of complex pheromones or even telepathy. Volatar. Advisors to Ocarsis, predominantly female among um, proto psychic cults, where it is anomalous with wise women. Zend, a middling rank of the psychic hierarchy, having a degree of power of protection unlike the Oran, that this rank is not recognized by most proto psychics. Oran, the lowest rank of psychic Rarity. Adherents do not descend from a psychic bloodline. Adherents who do not descend from a psychic bloodline begin at this level. Much like Zend, proto psychics do not typically recognize this rank, as most proto psychic cults are extremely insular and rarely embrace outsiders. While conversion is also uncommon among neo psychics, they are so known to employ a covert it grows selitism.
I am reading a lot of words I don't know the, the meaning of. I am curious about organisms, but it might just be like a list of links to different anomalies that we don't really have time for. I'll check it first. Alright, but for now let's read about mythology. Cosmology. The observable universe is one among a finite or infinite number of possible universes contained within a meta-universe. Each universe can in turn be divided with, into a finite or infinite number of iterations. The structure of the meta-universe, the natural laws which allow a for the manifestation and of universe is, is eternal, without beginning or end. Universes, on the other hand, are created and eventually destroyed. Beyond this, psychocosmology is fairly simple by virtue of the indifference its evidence here its existence is regarded as an entirely brutal fact, corruptible, discordant, and devoid of purpose. That is weird. <sighs> You ought to obey it. Yes, I imagine like the god from Persona 5, if you ever played it. A name thought to be first employed by Noxus and Mechanite Sex. Also known as Bajuma, the old god, God Eater, implying that it consumes its own progeny, not unlike Kronos of Greek mythology. Devourer, his lesser un undulating vastness, or their undulating vastness, the great winnower, the womb of chaos, and other various epithets, is regarded in psychicism as the pow principal power in the universe. neo psychics appear to admire this as an indeed, but proto psychics and all discovered scriptures thus far describe it as a true enemy of all people. Translate is fragments of Volkzarn suggests that Eon had somehow usurped control of this cosmic entity. Wearing the flesh of the old god as a sort of armor and crafting from its body a kingdom. This is contradicted by recently discovered scripture which suggests that Eon merely casts down the living in gods of the Deva, a weaker of, of the Archons, the children slash servants of Yarabayat. The continued with mortality of humanity and the absence of paradise ultimately imply that were Eon real, they had failed to achieve his goals. Uh, my understanding was that um, Eon was once a slave of the Deva who had uh, Yorobeyat speak out to them and uh, and give them t power or to overthrow the Deva uh, and uh, allow humanity to have freedom. And this was already after Mechanite had trapped uh, Yorobeyat uh, using its own body. As with all things related to psychicism, it is difficult to discern reality from myth, most especially when myth contradicts. Protopsychics view this entire entity with fear and disgust, regarding it as both the creator and destroyer of all life, and the progenitor of the gods. As more sects are discovered, the diversity of interpretation grows readily apparent. Hmm. The wound, cut from the flesh of totality, deep, it severed a line of future and past. Drawn to its ancient fester, gods swarmed as flies to a corpse. We waited with it in bloodless veins, faithful to that which we could not know, unable to imagine that we might become the greater. Hmm. Here we slept until our souls became flesh. Son Aku, or Sone Aku, I am not sure. <clears throat> Yarabayat is portrayed as both destroyer and incidental creator, feeding upon gods, worlds, and stars, while exiling life into the cosmos, which will evolve, grow, and eventually be harvested again. Life is thus a natural byproduct of the old god's existence, unguided by intelligence and trying through a process not entirely dissimilar from um, panspermia. The theory that life exists and is distributed throughout the universe in the form of germs or spores that develop in, in the right environment. 
Zarga, it's believed this entity has turned the multiverse into an altar with our existence, and the existence of all biological life forms being brought into reality for the single purpose of sacrifice. Blind and driven solely by instinct, the Advaita is depicted as being accompanied by other worldly entities known as Archons, or Voltas, among certain proto psychic cults. These beings are described by psychic texts as faceless manifestations of primordial chaos, their true forms inconceivable to the human mind. Gnostic and Mechanite scripture would mention the Archons as well, describing them as terrible and rapacious angels. Swineherd frustrated himself before the Sorcerer King and asked, Great Sorcerer King and Ozimar, uh, heart of man and light of lights, I ask for the folk of the of the cold mount. Arsh, we fear the red light answers that dance without harmony. Our spirit guides warn of ill omens. And he undid assured the man, and I have gazed upon the faceless ones, servitors of his, his undulating vastness. Their chief is blind, cast, cast by our words and will. He sings songs of anarchy, but they will not come again. These terrible spirits do not deserve our love. Render unto them no sacrifice until the stars have aligned. I'm not saying that word. Non. Not on YouTube. Sonny Vit. The six ordeals of Eon refer to six challenges is issued by, to Eon by the, by the Archons. Through enduring their trials, Eon is said to have mastered the rituals and practices. It is ubiquitous is the psychicism, breaking free from the bondage of, no, of mortal limitations. Further information about Eon's relationship with Galbaeth and his Archons, as well as the nature of the ordeals, remains unknown. All the relevant and sonnets are believed to be recorded within the El Elu-Uvenklas and known by unrecovered psychic grimoire. Some psychic cults hold that and the Archons, along with Yadabayat, do not originate from our universe, let alone the multiverse. These cults believe that these entities belong in the Void. The Void, also known as Vilnijan, a at, at lone word meaning without light, is an ineffable primordial manifestation of nothingness located outside the physical cosmos. And, their, uh, and that their colossal well, physical bodies are vessels for their East profane spirits. Because of their because their consciousness is tied to the void, they only know of hunger and will consume all things in their desire to feel whole, spreading like a cancer across the multiverse. The Archons are frequently referenced as having some relationship to the stars, and the growing darkness ex exists between them. But little, no, but little else is known about this connection. So I could I Anography depicts Archons as red or black. And vaguely cephalopodic. An unusual choice of representation as most psychics which traditionally live inland and are unlikely to encounter cephalopods in the first place. And to his flock, Ian thus spoke I have stepped beyond the flow of dreams, stole it before the old ones within their own desolate domain. I have endured their intolerable force across countless eons. I have seen the infinite dead worlds, murdered death herself. I have read the entrails of our creator. Behold, O eternity unfearied, know that our paradise draws near, and with our own flesh we shall birth it. As Sonne Skull. That is apparently the mythology of sarcasm. I thought that at almost all parts of sarcasm actually did worship um, Yorubayat, and that a huge part of um, the Church of the Broken Gods um, thing was. Uh, Um, that at the psychic cult wanted to free Yadavayat from 
a Megan and um imprison Megan's body that I was used to imprison in in, in it. Anyway, let's go over the history of psychicism. Most information regarding psychic history and mythology is sourced to the Ubafto Codex recovered right from SCP is 2480. This codex includes a partial translation of the Ivalxoran and related marginalia, along with archaeological evidence. The foundation has been able to establish the history aristy of sarcasm. As central as the codex has, has been, large gaps remain in the timeline and much of the following is entirely speculative and subject to change. So you can't be certain about any of this. But we might as well go over it anyway because we're here. Early history. Sarcastic weapons, armors, and triggers have been discovered among Agmanoa and ruins on the island of uh, Sauterini, formerly Thera, possibly placing their origins at least before the eruption event which triggered the complete collapse of Minoan civilization around 1500 BCE. Not to suggest an invasion and occupation, more likely the items rigged via Minoan and Norwegians and Central Asian trade routes. It's presently believed that Sarcasm itself did not reach the Mediterranean up until approximately 1200 BCE, directly related to the Bronze Age collapse. Deva uh, tablets, it stated to approximately 1800 BCE, referred to a slave rebellion in the northernmost province, led by Ismatic and Isriarch and the Half Blood. Scrolls discovered within contain phrases and terms archetypical to psychic cults, including references to a grand Carsis Eon. These findings suggest that Sarcasm has existed for nearly 4,000 years. All evidence linguistically and archaeologically points to Western Siberia as Sarcasm's place of origin. Interesting because I think that's also supposed to be the place where the most terrifying and flesh based SCP is known as 610 or the flesh that hates. Eon, if still alive, if having ever existed at all likely represents a high-level of reality vendor. Little is known about the Grand Crisis, Sorcerer King of Aditum, a city of, un of unnumbered, unspeakable crimes according to the ancient Mechanites, considered the capital of sarcasm. It remains unknown if the location continues to exist in some manner. I think it, ex it possibly exists as a 6x10, but we'll, we'll see. With it all information being in the form of uh, deification or demonization and lacking factual reliability, the uh, Alcazaran refers to Yon as having been born to a Devite a mother and sired by a, concubus, a, a concubinous father, implying that males born of such union were deaths and for slavery. The exact nature of Eon's bondage is unknown, but his supposed intellect suggests that he was not used for combat or manual labor perhaps serving under an alchemist or a priestess. <sighs> Artistic depictions of Eon are very, ranging from masculine to uh, androgynous, from young to old, and from human to forms otherworldly. He is most often characterized as wearing red, white, and black robes, and bearing his iconic staff, whilst the nude variants usually depict his Adi as impelled by various st ears or stakes, or carrying his own decapitated head, signifying his immunity to death. Associate symbols include spirals, shadow trains, drops of blood, sickles, and the Ouroboros. The Ouroboros is an ancient symbol of a serpent eating its own tail, signifying infinity and the cycle of birth and death. That last one is fairly 
interesting. It remains unknown which came first, Yon's doctrine or his revolution. If these events are grounded in reality, it is possible that the religion and developed in coincidence with a slave revolt and as a way to codify their methods of anomalous warfare. In his mission, Yon was aided by four individuals known as as, as the Clavigar, figures of reverence and supposed disciples of Yon. They are the saints of psychicism. Clavigar or Nodex? Associated with its intelligence, wisdom, perception, and mysteries, epithets include the tongue speaker, lord of mysteries, the all seeing, and the anticipation of Eon. Once a sage in the southernmost region of, of the divine influence, he preached a philosophy of peace and equality, building a following among the impoverished. As saying the Deva, he was captured and then publicly tortured. The poor he tried to help, now hurling stones upon him before a crowd of hot hundreds, drunk and atrocious in their stupidity. A deva cut off his tongue and so it hit, shut his mouth and had him emasculated. The complex, the complete removal of uh, male genitalia, an apparently common form of punishment among, among the matriarchal old devite. Rather than having that ex executed, execute, they had him, they instead had him marked, a symbol placed upon the forehead, Impossible to remove. It designated him as a sufferer, one who the people were required by the Davis to decree to for or ever torment but never kill. That sounds cruel and not cool. Nadux wandered the land as a pariah, the night at refuge and safe passage, struck with rocks and slashed with knives, all by the people he had helped to save. It is written that and he beheld, while suffering a fever dream, a messianic entity that could rescue him and humanity from an existence of suffering and tears. Nadox would travel north in search of his savior to guide Eon toward his destiny. Nadox is typically depicted in red and gold attire. His head sometimes hands completely bandaged or caged by a of mask, representing his status as a sufferer and bearing multiple arms with eyes in the palms of his hands. His symbols include with eyes, hands, scrolls, teardrops, and lotus flowers. <sighs> As an eon held six fingers aloft, and upon their spears did the soldiers impaled themselves. For you, they cried before the blood drowned their tongues. And eon unsaid. Now do you see? And Nodox weeped as more, or did screw themselves in Eon's name, for he had seen, and now he knew the truth of his words. From Sonus Saraz. Clavigar Lavatar. Associated with the that love, eroticism, pleasure, motherhood, disease, and unrestrained reproduction, breeding cancers, growth, etc. If that's include the one Eon most desired, the high blood redeemer, and the mother on occasion on occasions brood or hive mother. A priestess as well as the daughter of a, 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 a matriarch, she was initially in opposition to Eon, whose revolution threatened her way of life. It is written that her hatred for Eon eventually became a sort of infatuation. Unable to remove him from her mind, she sought to capture and bind him as her consort. In her quest to make him hers, Lavatar sent wave after wave out of slave hunters, but none returned. In time, it would be Eon who came to her by his own accord. It's written that Eon visited her in the night by passing her guards and appearing within her bedchamber. Instead of attacking, he sat upon the edge of her bed and, spiked and quietly spoke to her. What was said is unknown. It's written that the words were meant for Lavatar are alone and thus never recorded. But, resort, but resulted in, in Lavatar and Eon forming a union over a period of 12 days. 
On the twelfth day, the two left her palace behind, never to return. Lavatar is is depicted at is typically depicted as beautiful, voluptuous, often to unrealistic extremes, and almost always in the nude, save for gold armlets, including head a dress, necklaces, and bangles. She is often stylized as having claw-like fingers and toes, as well as a pair of horns which may or may not be part of her headdress. Her symbols include an insect queen, additionally a be your aunt, a punctured heart, a blue and gray rose, and a broken scepter. Beneath the black moon, her devotion took the form of a stone knife, like those of the reindeer or folk of Adiam, penetrated in ember her blood colored by ancient sins poured from the wound. Her tears like the warm rain of distant summers. Beneath the poison moon, the ever flowed no more, and the snow she painted red in the cipher for Eon, who drank deep of the rented honey of Lavatar's kiss. Eon surrendered on her. Oh. And uh, I am engrossed out. We are done reading this. From Sonne Tall. Gross. Anyway. Oh, I, I'm guessing Auroch. A figure of reverence and suppose disciple of Eon, associated with strength, war, violence, wilderness hunting, and seemingly in contradiction, loyalty, and revolt. Evidence include the horned beast, the fruit lord, and the pale hunter, described as being of unnatural physical strength, or it was a product of alchemical and dramaturgical experimentation on slaves, and thrall to Mumetriar like Ashri Gosha, the ruling deva in the city of Jay, or it served as personal guard and pit fighter. Apparently considered the greatest as gladiatorial combatant of his time. It is written that Eon, when taking in the city of, oh, that's Jail, I can't read apparently, entered the palace of Matriarch like Asvigosa, presumably the highest authority in the city, he requested that the Matriarch should leave and take her with a message to the Deva of Devas, lest she suffer retribution. Refusing his ultimatum, the Matriarch or an Auric to destroy him, it is written that Oryk has aid, his runes of, of bondage setting in his starved of soul flame so that his body became spirit. Turning to his matriarch, he struck as we go, Osa, his fist imbued with the very power she had forced upon him and reduced her body to cinder and ash, heavenly starlight. <sighs> Auric is typically depicted as a large and muscular as a large and muscular cyclopic man and wearing a loincloth. His symbols include the two headed an axe, a one eyed skull, a hunting spear, fractured earth bones, a closed fist, and a blue elephant. And a bull elephant, I mean. Hmm. As Auric said to the Kytherans, Kytherans uh, location that appears in both psychic culture and church of broken god scripture, the Volgzaran describes the conquest of, of Kythera and the conversion of its people. The Maxwell Alien Book of Horus associates the location with Frost of size NK class and of the world scenario. Powers made from the pain of the fragile. Here, here weakness dies. Here, strength is born. I exert myself, a pale reflection of Eon's sacrifice of flesh to the intolerable force and shred frailty's husk. I commune with my Akalot, a symbiotic, or, a symbiotic organism implied in the bodies of psychic cultists, for or discussed in the organism section. My sick red metamorphosis complete. So now, Zisk, I cannot say that a name. I do not know Zusk. I guess Zuckerberg. Yeah, it does sound a little bit like like that. It does look a little bit like that. 
so this is Clavgar's song. A figure of reference and supposed disciple of Eon, associated with darkness, secrecy, deception, poison, assassination, and justice, or Jaka. Jaka translates as divide, separate, or even coal. It is employed in Sarcasm as a concept of cosmic justice, separating the strong from the weak, the good from the evil, adherence from um, apostate, terminating those deemed enemy or unnecessary. Evidence include the Whisperer, the Coiled Shadow, the Faceless One, and the Judgment of Eon. A young house servant, she quietly endured Deva and abuse throughout her life. Having suffered long enough, she calmly murdered the entire household with poison, garret, and dagger. Captured, she would be imprisoned with the, within the fortress city of Cursed. The first to fall, so that he might rise. Said to be the first kingdom to fall to Aditam and having become so symbolic to the inevitable defeat of those who stood in opposition to sarcasm. Sarn was awaiting execution when first approached by Aion, who moved through the dungeon walls like the mists of summer snow melt. There he said, The wind whispers of your actions. There is no evil in the judgment. You did not choose to be the vessel of our will. Many will die, I this say, but you are needed alive. The prophet's hand is described as having transformed into a wolfish maw, tearing apart the cell door with its teeth and liberating sign. Holding her skills, Sarn would eventually control a network of spies and assassins. A Davite tablet describes her efficacy in graphic detail, including men and women disemboweled in the streets and Davite and infants strangled in their craters by traitorous servants. Sarn is typically depicted as a, either a young girl dressed in rags or an entirely black, half human, half servant being. Occasionally, both representations are shown with the chimeric entity acting as a girl's shadow. Her symbols include serpents, typically adders, a sacrificial dagger, a scale, and bound effigies. The heart is silent before her dagger seen, a moment immortalized in a single strike, a judgment unavoidable, inescapable, dismay, a death inconceivable, to the arrogance of Deva, triumph, a dagger in the darkness, with the blood of tyrants, our children sleep well. Sone Vaku. There is little available information about sarcasm between 1600 and 1200 BCE. Despite the period being considered the golden age of psycho civilization, it is during this period that Devi culture recedes. As <clears throat> an hypothesized that the day, I'd start sought to anomalously preserve themselves as more and more territory was lost to Sarkites. Existing as only existing only as a small city state in what is now Mongolia. Mong is her as the lack of archaeological evidence for existence it is to invite to many psychic structures being composed of living organic material. That makes sense actually. War and the Fall of the Deathless Empire Saka civilization, having reached its zenith, began to spread into Ukakesa, Antalya, Balkans, and, and parts of the 11th and Mesopotamia. Impressed by or fearful of their anomalous capabilities, several tribal groups began to fight under the, the banner of uh, Adiam and the Sarkic Fate. These include the Kaskians, proto Proto-Othracians, Lycians, Illyrians, and many others. The semi-mythical state would come to refer to itself as Kama-Aktama, uh, uh, a compound word meaning in the deathless in Old, old Attite. It appeared to be derived from the proto o Uralic Kama and Katama, deathless. Or the deathless. The, Hitt it, it, the Hittite king Ending as Sephal Alamir II tried in vain to defeat the invaders, contributing to the fall of the Hittite Empire. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. This information, as with all 
information in the Bobby Sark Marxism cannot be revealed to the public. Fortunately, most non foundation trade historians blame the events of the late Bronze Age collapse on the mysterious Sea Peoples. Huh. Okay. The, um, the Deathless Empire established a foothold in the Mediterranean, invading, colonizing the, uh, invading and colonizing the islands of, of Cyprus, Crete, and Gyaros. It is uncertain as to who struck first, first by a coalition of kingdoms was formed in response to the Sarkic Kingdom, resulting in a war around 1200 BCE. Archaeological findings such as mass graves, weapons, terrain damage, and primary source our documents of the scrolls recovered from Gyaros and the RLC revealed the extreme and anomalous nature of the war. Foundation historians estimated a death toll ranging from 20 to 30 million, making the fourth most devastating war in recorded history. According to recovered documents, the coalition formed in response to the Deathless Empire included Egyptians, Elizabeth, Onion, Greeks, Mignon, Anyone appears to many conspirators fought on the side of the Deathless Empire. Minoan civilization had been at the decline at the time of the war. Canaanites, Assyrians, and the Mechanites. The Mechanites are theorized as having been the driving force for the coalition, seeking allies against the threat perceived by them as the end of the world. Although Greek and origin, the cult of Mechan had temples throughout the Mediterranean, most notably in Egypt and the Levant. Or Levant, I'm not sure. Most details of the war are unknown to the foundation. It is suspected that the deployment of colossi, such as SCP-2406, as well as the, the heavy use of, of a substance resembling Greek fire, it traditionally it thought as having been developed in 672 CE, that turned the war against the Sarkites. When the war was over, the the Deathless Empire was assumed to destroyed along with the along with Sarkis civilization. In reality, Sarkicism would continue in secret at both its homeland in the Urals and among the tribes that had fought under the banner of the Empire, such as along the Thracians and Dacians. The damage to the region was great and many, many civilizations did not recover, resulting in the collapse of various kingdoms, a crisis of refugees, the decline of art, literature, science, and technology, and the lingering disease and famine from psychic biological weapons, an event later known to historians as the late Bronze Age, Bronze Age Collapse. The fall of the once seemingly deathless empire would result in the psychic diaspora, leading to the development of culturally distinct psychic cults throughout Asia. Due to a lack of reliable information, the Foundation can only speculate about such activities between 1100 BCE and 1300 CE. The rise of neo sarcasism The majority of known neo sarcic cults, now there's Black Lodge being the only known neo sarcic cult to not share this, this line, lineage, the Sarkic Civil Just Changes Foundation uncovers more sarcic organizations, appear to descend from certain and and the Carpathian, Carpathian noble families influenced by the proto psychics and the Nari. It is unknown whether these some are in Tetri portrayed at Carpathian courts or if they were instead sought out by the nobles themselves, ignoring or dismissing, possibly embracing the rumors of devil worship and witchcraft surrounding the cult. Documents that are effects retrieved from SCP unknown suggest that some, some Nari served as court magicians. Advising their lords and ladies on matters of alchemy, medicine, astrology, and the occult. In time, this would result in the development of psychic great houses, affluent families practicing their own interpretation of psychicism, placing the individual above the collective and applying it to their own self serving needs. This new strain of psychicism was spread throughout Europe via marriage. Once these footholds were established, the great houses grew incestuous. Nasty. Anyway, that is the history. So let's go over what they have to say about proto-psychicism.
which I'm quite sure won't be that much. Anyway. Individual orders vary by region, but can be divided into two primary types, pro-psychic and neo-psychic. These do not, do not appear to represent divergent beliefs so much as environmental adaptations. Traditions of pro-psychic system do not operate in the open unless the location is significantly isolated. Such sects display acute technophobia and extreme adrenaline, willing to go oh, as far or as to destroy or disable advanced electronics when encountered. Communication devices appear to be considered especially abhorrent. Pro-psychic co also generally value humility and self-sacrifice. Known orders. The Solomonari. The ancestors of the Solomonari, which I'm just going to call the Solos, also historically recorded as Zygramets or Holton, likely settled in the Car Arpathian in basin between 1200 and 600 BCE. This is for excellently hypothesized that the sockets assimilated the local proto Alteration people eventually becoming the Edations, a people recorded by ancient Greek and or Roman and sources. A psychic stronghold corresponded with the given location of the legendary Islam and a school of black magic and Romania in folklore. Since classified as SCP blank, was discovered in the Southern and Carpathians and is believed to have once been the heart of the Isolo cult. It has been and hypothesized that the Isolo are related to or ha or one and the same as the Dracian cult of Zamoxis, having culturally melded with the ancient proto Asian people. Documents discovered at SCP Blank and SCP 2191 suggest that the Isolo remained highly influential, albeit secretive, until the 15th century, possibly destroyed by. A John Anyade, a leading Hungarian military and political figure. <coughs> Excuse me. Several boyars of well, Achia and Moldavia most notably the he got a clan of Hungarian noble, nobles are believed to have been under the control of the Solo. As an influence, what I would lead to the Development of neo psychism and its Western expansion. <sighs> it remains debatable whether modern traditions would should be considered truths although of following what was discovered at SCP blank. Most are located in, in the island pockets throughout the the Carpathians, with little to no connection with the, with another, the religion in its current state is an amalgamation of local folk traditions and local uh, rituals. The Church of the Red Harvest. The Church of the Red Harvest was discovered at SCP-2133 and 1936 by Guru Division P. The Foundation became aware of the sect shortly after gaining control of SCP-2133, following the dissolution of the USSR. 2133 is an unnamed village located in northern and rural mountains whose denizens are the only known members of the Church of the Red Harvest. The Church practices is a generation rit ritual, while the recent dubbed Ed Harvest as newborns from the turnip, of fields oats found throughout 2133. Rose referred to the regeneration process as a part of an old covenant, one that cannot be broken and is to last until the return of paradise. Aditum. It is currently believed that the Church of the Red Harvest is directly controlled by Carsis, Carsis Alka, located in a subterranean dwelling beneath the nearby mountains. Connected to the village by a series of tunnels accessible via the village church. The Vatula. I'm not sure if I'm saying this right. The Vatula were originally mistaken for Agori. As a Sukhshava Assad is known to engage in postmortem rituals. Due to several superficially similar rituals. Known to the Foundation since 1969, a soccer connection was only established in 2010 through extensive research. The Vatula 
amend fear and respect among the royal or poor of the Indian states of Rajasthan, Himachal of Pradesh, Jammu, and Kashmir, Ariana, er, er, Punjab, and Gujarat. Why do you supposed to say and twice? They trace their origins to Crisis Vasky, who they claim arrived from the northwest, granting them this blessing and spreading a brilliant plague to their enemies. The Church of the Eternal Mother The Church of the Eternal O Mother is a small sect found at SCP-4476, deep in the the South Louisiana Bayou represents what is the oldest example of cyphersism being translated to the North American continent. Practiced exclusively by either members of La Famille Inatu, the ritual of the directors of the church can trace their early lineage as far back as the fall of Gears and Crisis Met Excess. First contact by Foundation in April 2010, the majority of the rituals and specific religious beliefs are still relatively unknown. As far as research into the Natu family has been suspended following several recent setbacks. Neo Sarcasism hmm. <clears throat> Neo Sarcasism displays only superficial resemblance to historical and, and proto sarcastic sects, whereas proto sarcasm is isolated and archaic, bound by superstition and taboo. Neo Sarcasism embraces modernity, whereas proto sarcasm is fragmented, each group existing within a vacuum. Neo Sarcasm is cosmopolitan and unified. It remains unknown whether neo sarcastic cults represent a relatively recent development or a willing evolution of pro-psychic sex. neo display no qualms with technology and may be found in heavily populated locations. Their daily life is differing little from the others of their culture and social status. For neo psychic cults, the proper moral purpose of one's life is the pursuit of one's own desires and attainment of power. While some neo psychics refer to clean into their crumbling manners, relying on lands and titles others have embraced modernity through capitalism. Of course, so Disney would definitely be involved in this. Oh, right, I'm not supposed to say stuff like that. Anyway, none orders. Addie Tum's Wake. Active throughout the Nordic Eastern United States, Addie Tum's Wake is known to be the oldest psychic organization in North America, but the evidence of their existence and staying as far back as 1650. The organization was presumably destroyed on November 25th, 1952, but not before the creation of SCP-24 or 80. Considered by foundations of and stuff, Project Citra Accra to represent the first shots of what would become a complex and invisible conflict, Cornelius P. Ebotfeld III, Crisis is Okisk, a millionaire industrialist with an acute interest in the occult, was the acting leader of Adam's Wake until his death in 1952. This best foundation in 1932 as merely another decadent social club, their anonymous capabilities were not recognized until the 9th, November 28, 1952 incident. The foundation fears that Adam's Wake survived its initial defeat. It is theorized that the renewed cult is presently under the control of Vivian and Darren Croy. President and CEO of the Dern and and Adfell Financial Group, wife of Hungarian national Alexander Croy, CEO of Access Arms, and a suspected Sarkite. The Hunters Black Lodge. is an anomalous criminal cult primarily active in post-Soviet states known as the Hunter's Black Lodge, or simply the Black Lodge. The Black Lodge has been linked to extortion, murder, robbery, gambling, prostitution, human trafficking, a drug trafficking, weapon trafficking, and other ground fighting rings. While these activities are not inherently anomalous, the anomalous capabilities of the 
the Black Lodge ha has had an apparent effect on their practice. The Foundation first became aware of the Black Lodge in the, in the early 1990s after receiving a tip from informants in Interpol for an investigation to uncover or the Black Lodge uncovered Black Lodge related documents from the recently discovered at Grid Division P. I mean, from the recently dissolved Grid Division P. Later corroborated by former members, it appears that Grid Division P was unable to fully contain or neutralize the effect the threat presented by the Black Lodge, with one source describing them as a Hydra. The organization and thought neutralized on several occasions, only for it to appear months later stronger than before. Victims of the of Black Lodge have been discovered impaled while the, uh, penetrated by large organic spines. The spines appear officially etinous and the uh, uh, spine showing structure similar to its coral contain human DNA. A science commonly is showing evidence of ritual cannibalism. Esoteric Order of the White of White Worm. <sighs> Active primarily through well, throughout Europe, the Esoteric Order of the White, White Worm is a psychic cult disguised in a cult themed infraternal or organization. An order, organization, or society of club of men associated together for various religious or secular aims. Despite being referred or to as fraternal, the esoteric order of the white worm is open to men and women. Similar to other secret societies, the existence of the cult is an open secret, while its true nature is unknown to the general population. Although, like other such groups, it has been a subject of various conspiracy theories, the Foundation does not believe that there is much factual basis on to such claims. Based on documents recovered from SCP Unknown archives, the esoteric order may be one of the earliest neo psychic sects, founded by Hungarian and nobles. Heavily influenced by these Olo court magicians, the religion transformed into a hidden pagan faith to a secret and tool of the landed gentry. The sense of the of House Boros, a Hungarian noble family, are thought to dominate the leadership and positions in, of the esoteric order. <coughs> Excuse me. The Dark Water Lodge. Another more recent discovery has been the existence of the Dark Water Lodge. Located within the closed nexus of Le Rue Macabre outside of New Orleans, in LA, the Dark Water Lodge remains mostly unobserved. Negotiations to gain research or to access to the lodge via the a Rue Macabre a leadership is ongoing. What is known about them is that they represent one of the few known examples of the attitude as, as far as south it's the greater or part of northwestern Africa, translated to the North American continent sometime between during the mid 16th century. The lodge brought with them um, a practice that interbreed extensively with the Akan peoples of Ghana. And finally, we have organisms. The creation and manipulation of living organisms through anomalous the analysis suggests that some um, psychic organisms have been created through a process of artificial selection, bringing organisms, including humans, to the point where they no longer resemble their ancestors. I Means represents and the most immediate threat posed by psychicism. Enough patterns have been discovered among these organisms that they can divide, be divided into different species. These organisms display no, no signs of fear or pain and re regenerate injuries at an anomalous rate. Below is a partial list of such entities. SK Biotype 001. Colloquially referred to as behemoths by personnel, these, these entities are commonly over 4 meters tall, weighing approximately 7,000 in kilograms with pale flabby skin, lacking visible ears and nose. Their face is dominated by a large urge to the mouth. The first recorded instance of an SK Biotype of this one was SCP-24 or 82. They appear to be of limited intelligence. SK Biotype 002 
generally 1.5 to 2 meters tall and weigh approximately 250 kilograms. Mouths are vertical, running the length of what approximates a face, so the fingers end in the 50 to 60 centimeter talons. Bodies are partially protected by white, chitinous carapace. The flesh beneath dark red and visible, all at movable joints. SK Biotype 003. Also classified as SCP 2191, SK Biotype 003 are considered genetically human but have undergone several significant, seemingly fatal mutilations. SK Biotype 003 lack all major internal organs, with the exception of the lungs, heart, and brainstem. The outer epidermis lacks pigmentation and displays a, a condition resembling cracked porcelain. Possibly related to Uhalin quit anti I it's Eosis. Oh, Harlequin. Sorry. I did not say it right. Any superior drug is la lacking or some and we somehow remove secondary sex characteristics. The regressed eyes are cut by a layer of skin, rendering them mostly blind but still able to react to light. Universally displaying not variations in so weak lengths above uh, 100. And, and M. Further deviations have from baseline home statements include especially flat upturned nose and tunnel shaped ears, both considered related to their dependency on olfactory and auditory perception. They do not appear to communicate via language, the only sound produced being a persistent clicking of the tongue, speculated to will be a form of echolocation. SK Biotype 004, colloquially referred to as snatchers by personnel. Prehensile organic structures dark red in color with a tentacloid shape. Snatchers are said entry and are generally used by psychics to guard specific locations. <sighs> Note psychics as Kirak, instances of SK Biotype 005 are organic. Biologically living structures used as temples. The foundation currently has a, a deceased instance, SCP-2095, in containment. But other possible living instances are theorized to exist across the world. Update. Living instances have been recently encountered by failed agents. Further information is pending. <sighs> The creation of a crack is more terrible than initially hypothesized. A living human is anointed, then repeatedly fed and shaped, its brain slowly atrophying as it becomes a living temple. The psychics cultivate flesh and bone as one might a bonsai tree, says Dr. Sukino. This is getting disturbing. <sighs> SK Biotype 006, known to Saga as an Akulot and his sacred white worm. Instances of SA Biotype 006 are the symbiotic organisms found in the body is of both psychic and psychic organisms. It is believed that they act as a secondary immune system protecting the host against disease, as well as greatly increasing their regenerative, regenerative abilities. SK Biotype 006 is believed to be connected to the physical transformations from some psychics undergo. SK Biotype 007 SK Biotype 007 may exist or be composed of multiple species, and generally refers to an, any SK Biotype that lacks a stable physical form. Although this can occur in many, if not all, psychic organi uh, organizations, if correctly injured. Existing as a gelatinous mass, as organization. So, uh, organisms are able to increase their size with no limit by absorbing the biomass of those it encounters. An individual can be converted into SK Biotype 007 by ritual as in encountered when 
SCP-2070 E5 caused the transfiguration and subsequent death of Dr. Albert Krut Odenberg. So he's been Cronenberg. Okay. That was the psychic cult. As you saw, they treat flesh and bone like we do metal and copper as a way to build and and something to manipulate for their own purposes. Obviously the Foundation does not have much love for either the Sarkaites or the a Church. But there is a lot more capable of being tolerated from the Church and the Sarkaites as long as they don't accidentally screw up in making their or, or God, or make their God and or release the deity that might be responsible for this church's entire, and for this cult's entire existence. If you liked the video, please leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, and comment down below. Next time, I'll be talking about the serpent's hand, and after that, it'll be time for... SCP-3000 You'll see what that is later Goodbye, see you next time